<coughs> Alright, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Let us continue with our second video on communication uh, We stop here, the last time we talk about information richness of communication media Because different type and form of communication would uh, deliver a different level of information richness uh, Let us talk about face-to-face uh, -face communication for example this is uh, this type of communication uh, chan channel could uh, provide you with the highest information richness as compared to spoken communication electronically transmitted and or even uh, personally addressed written communication and then uh, the impersonal written communication as is considered as as low information richness <laughs> information richness could be in the form of creating the understanding so when we have a face-to-face -face communication like i i told you before that uh, 378 and 55 so if we are able to communicate face to face uh, we are able to provide a good body gestures uh, and then a facial expression body movement which also contributed to the 55 percent of the effective communication process <laughs> Face-to-face -face communication has the highest information richness, can take advantage of verbal and nonverbal signals. Uh, that's the most uh, effective ones if you are trying to compare with any other forms of communication channel. And then uh, there is one term that has been uh, circulated or being used in many uh, different organizations nowadays, management by wandering around. Uh, it's a face-to-face -face communication technique in which a manager walks around a work area and talks informally with employees about issues and concerns. So uh, the manager is giving the opportunity for the employees to give feedback and opinions uh, with regards to the uh, work-related matters. <laughs> And then we have spoken communication electronically transmitted uh, has the second highest information uh, richness telephone conversation uh, information rich with tone of voice senders emphasis and quick feedback but provide no vi visual nonverbal cues so uh, yes uh, the second uh, option after the face-to-face -face, uh, if you are talking about the most effective ones would be a telephone caller and because sometimes we can hear a different tone of the voice uh, by the sender to put emphasis on certain things especially on the submission date on the content of the report so we can capture the importance of uh, that particular message that the sender is trying to emphasize <laughs> And then uh, personally address written communication. Uh, this could be in the form of emails, personal letters, WhatsApp and everything has lower richness than the verbal forms of communication, but still is directed at a given person. Uh, personal addressing helps ensure receiver actually reads the message. For example, if we are talking about work-related matters uh, subject to a particular individual, instead of we address uh, that information, <laughs> Uh, in the WhatsApp group, so we WhatsApp them or this person uh, directly, individually, in order for us to ensure that the receiver will actually read the message. So once we notify that it has been a blue tick uh, on the message that we have already sent, so we know that they already uh, received the message. But nowadays, sometimes they turn off the blue tick punya element, so sometimes it might not help. And the last one, impersonal written communication. Uh, this is more general. For example, newsletter reports. We try to uh, create a general statements to everybody. And so this has the lowest information richness. Sometimes even the person that we intend to communicate to, sometimes he or she might not even feel that the content of the newsletter or that report is directed to them. So this is the least uh, uh, in terms of the information richness. <laughs> so under impersonal uh, written communication, uh, one of the things that we need to bear in our mind is that information overload. The potential for important information uh, to be ignored or overlooked while ten 
uh, tangential ten, tangential information receive uh, attention. So what we talk here is that uh, when we talk about information overload, sometimes when there are too much information in, and it is not being directed to any particular individual, sometimes we tend to overlook or ignore uh, ignore uh, the content of the message that is trying to be delivered to us. <laughs> And then other impersonal written communication. Uh, many, many years ago, blog is quite famous. Uh, it is a website on which an individual or a group or organization posts information, commentary and opinions, and to which uh, readers can respond with their own commentary and opinions. Uh, this is more on a personal uh, website or personal page uh, that uh, you can allow people to comment on the idea that you post. <laughs> And then uh, another impersonal written communication is social networking site, a website that enables people to communicate with others with whom they have some common interest or connection. <laughs> so the next one that we would like to discuss is on communication network. Communication networks uh, refer to the pathways along which information flows in group and teams. Uh, and throughout the organization and it is important that uh, an organization develop a good communication network uh, within their organization to ensure that uh, effective communication channel could be developed and to ensure that uh, the communication is effective within the organization <laughs> and then the type of communication network uh, depends on the nature of the group task uh, for some of the work, sometimes the network could be a little bit complicated and then uh, sometimes it depends on the extent uh, to which group members need to communicate with each other to achieve uh, group goals. So here we have uh, different So this is on uh, figure 16.3 and we have a different forms of uh, communication and then this we can say that they have different uh, channel to communicate like this one sometimes this is more like a banks uh, in which we have a central bank and then they try to communicate with each of our which uh, each of the branches and we can see that uh, there is no connection between each of the branch <laughs> and then a chain network uh, this is like a flow chart from one uh, work process to another work process and then we can simply identify that it is important that we deliver our the, the communication must be effective from one uh, department to another department because otherwise uh, it will not uh, create an effective outcomes when we try to deliver that information to uh, to, to the uh, upcoming uh, network that we have in our channel and then the circle network uh, in which each of them are quite uh, dependent upon one another and then in this uh, all channel net network this could be in the form of like at the, at the university for example all of the information at the bursara and then at the uh, HEA, Halewal Academy, Halewal Praja, and, and then uh, registration. And so all of your information is quite important for all of the departments uh, because uh, whatever information that you use during your registration would be transferred to any other departments uh, within the university. The organizational chart summarizes summarizes the formal reporting channels in, organiza in an organization. Communication in organization flows through formal and informal pathways. And then vertical communications flow up and down corporate hierarchy. So if we talk about the vertical, vertical is between up and down. The flow up and down, it can be top down or bottom up. So that is vertical communication. Sometimes when we communicate to the top manager that is considered as uh, uh, bottom up, and then sometimes when we receive email notification from our line leader, so that is considered as a top down communication. And at the same time, we also need to develop a horizontal communication between the departments. And so that is also kind of like important. So one of the way for you to understand the communication network in the organization is by looking at their organizational chart. 
so yes like i said horizontal communication flows between employees of the same level uh, you need to have both you cannot only rely upon one because uh, when we talk about organization each of the department is uh, dependent upon one another so they need to have a good horizontal communication flow uh, between uh, employees of the same level <laughs> and then informal communication can span uh, levels and de departments and then uh, a grapevine is considered as an informal network carrying unofficial information throughout the firm uh, sometimes this uh, grapevine is very important when we talk about gossiping sometimes when the top manager wants to make some changes in the organization uh, they want to uh, merge the departments so what they can st uh, they, they can start doing that by uh using it to, by going it through an informal communication channel for example you just talk to the one person mesti ada dalam organization yang kita tahu yang memang boleh kepo chim ya that can sekejap je he or she could spread all of the information in order to get the feedback and everything so you talk to this person and then you will see that how fast that information will be disseminated uh, at least by the time when you want to uh, make an official announcement at least everybody is in the in the know so informal communication is kind of like uh, quite important as well for example sometimes when we talk about uh, sometimes it could be uh, work related sometimes most of the times uh, it is non work related lah so this is the formal and informal communication networks in an organization yang formal yang yes yang formal yang this one and that flows uh, organizational structure and between the level so we know that the yellow is all responsible to this person the blue one is all responsible to this yellow person but this two blue is only responsible and communicate or receive orders direction from this particular individual that is the formal communication channel but sometimes the informal ones uh, when we talk about gossiping and everything and uh it could happen between employees in any of the respective departments for example if we know that this person is dating with uh, this person and so that information uh, could be disseminated uh, very very fast in the organization and uh, secara informal uh, we have few more slides uh, we'll see how it goes inshallah uh, information technology and communication so uh, technology plays also an important role the intranet is the internal system uh, within the organization uh, sometimes it helps uh, versatility as a communication medium can be used for several different purposes by people who may have little expertise in software and programming <laughs> Groupware is a computer software that enables members of groups and teams to share information with each other to improve their communication and performance. How to be successful using groupware work is team-based and members are rewarded for group performance. And then groupware has full support of top management, culture of the organization, stresses flexibility. And then groupware is being used for specific purpose, employee receive adequate, adequate training. Lah. So we need to check out so groupware is a computer software that enables the members, the group, the teams to share information uh, within that particular group. So it enhances the communication effectiveness among the team members. Uh, but most important ta most important thing is that each of the employee uh, in the group where they must receive adequate training on how to use uh, the system so i will stop here first and then we will continue just few other slides uh, on communication uh, chapter in in the next video and then we will wrap up inshallah okay assalamualaikum and good day